their personal information protection law prevents the data to be used for consumerism, tracking, spying, or selling that data for any number of mostly nefarious reasons. This means you won't get an ad for cheese on your Instagram because your girlfriend's friend posted about cheese. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Before we get into this episode, I want to let you guys know that if you want to be in the virtual audience for one of these recordings, you can do so by getting a ticket uh, on the last Thursday of every single month where I do these Zoom shows and it's a new show every month talking about another kind of big sociopolitical topic. So if you're interested in that last Thursday of every month, you can grab your tickets, come join us in the Zoom virtual theater and be a part of these Forkful of Noodles recordings. You can find that ticket information over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums, You can check out past episodes of this show, my interview show, Taboo Table Talk, and the live stream, more riffy show that I do about current events and news stories called Road Reflections. Again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. And if you're interested in in supporting this show financially, you can do so on the website as well by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member and making monthly contributions. To those that are already making monthly contributions, I really, really appreciate you guys and you guys help make this show better with each contribution. All right, now let's get right into the episode. America is also a nation where capitalists run amok. Mega billionaires get to evade taxes regularly and hide their wealth in offshore accounts. That's right. American currency is getting more tans than the American people. The American political system that operates under legalized bribery is wildly corrupt, but at every turn is calling China corrupt. And there's a reason why. China is regulating its capitalists. Since 1979, when China resigned its isolationism and joined the world economy, there have been capitalists that have decided to headquarter themselves there. And thanks to the rapid industrialization of its economy, China has the world record on billionaires, which is another reason America is pissed, because they're no longer number one in the bastard bad boy billionaire department. Now, China has come up with an income cap that says after you make a certain amount of money, you have to give back to the Common Prosperity Program to help the Chinese people. And if they don't, these billionaires get a pretty substantial fine. Encouraging rich people and uh, private companies to contribute back. So this is philanthropy, it's donations. And we've actually seen um, one after another, these big tech firms, many of them, including like Alibaba, uh, have already gotten hit by these anti-monopoly practices, gotten big fines. Alibaba got $2.8 billion in fines. And soon after came out and said, okay, I'm gonna donate $15.5 billion to Common Prosperity. And we've seen that billionaires lining up, huge celebrities, big tech firms, waiting to basically say, okay, we will also pay back. People are framing it as a kind of Robin Hood, but, you know, many of these stay very wealthy billionaires, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but there's still there's some other guys. <laughs> yeah, there's still billionaires. It just would bring a little bit of, like, Trump change for, for them. Look, China is also going after big tech as well, particularly companies that deal with transactions. These corporations become micro-lending companies and start acting like a bank where especially these companies, they're so they're such mega platforms that they start branching into areas. And for, for Ant Group or Ant Financial, they were going into the sector of, you know, micro lending, uh, financial services, that they were really becoming to be 
act like a bank without having to follow the rules of the bank. And that is really a red line here. Uh, the banks are very quite tightly controlled. They're state owned. And so that is not an area that a private company can just say that I can go into and change the rules of an industry that you are not uh, a part of. So these companies were subverting government regulation of the banking industry and becoming private banks with a tech focus. This is also known as the American banking industry. China's anti-corruption law is strict enough that billionaires and CEOs themselves are becoming corruption watchdogs. Call me cynical, but I don't see America legislating against billionaires and the CEOs. Billionaires keep getting tax loopholes because they own politicians that write the laws. In China, billionaires don't have any influence over politicians. And they're sure shit ain't getting person of the year named by a fucking neoliberal out of touch magazine. Again, this by no means is saying that China has officially defeated capitalism and the concept of corruption itself. But it is maintaining it and it still has a lot of work to do. Gig economy workers in China are exploited in the same manner as gig economy workers in the U.S. Gig economy workers work 12 hour days in order to earn enough income to survive. The CEOs say that the workers should be blessed for this job and it's, quote, flexibility. So the Chinese government is in the process of cracking down on this level of exploitation as well. And China also has plans to use data for public good. And then another part is, is a big part is data. You know, the question of who owns data, how data is used, how does it get processed? Uh, all of that, I mean, is, is like of an kind of utmost urgency everywhere we go. And of course, um, you know, uh, Ant Group uh, and it's, uh, what's it called? The transaction payment app, Alipay, actually annually transacts more money than the GDP of China. It's a huge amount of money that they're circulating. And it means that every single purchase that is made, they have the data on that, you know, what people are looking for, what they're searching for, what they want. So that kind of stuff right now, the, the government is going through big conversations about treating that as a public good. And I actually mm -hmm. think that's quite an interesting debate. Data isn't something that should be just in the hands of the private companies because it is I mean, a public good. And so there's a huge amount of interesting debate about how data should be um, uh, should be treated, uh, who should own it, who should manage it, manage it, how the government should come in. One of the ways they executed this idea was in their response to COVID. Everywhere you went, you had to scan your phone, so it registered who was there. Now, this sounds super intrusive, but that information was used by the health ministry to send messages to people if they've been in the same space as someone who contracted COVID. This is how they were able to stay ahead of the pandemic. Their personal information protection law prevents the data to be used for consumerism, tracking, spying, or selling that data for any number of mostly nefarious reasons. This means you won't get an ad for cheese on your Instagram because your girlfriend's friend posted about cheese. And look, that's not really an exaggeration. A few Christmases ago, when I was still married, my ex-wife was looking at a purse. About 10 minutes later, as I was scrolling through Facebook, I got an ad for that exact purse she was looking at on her phone. Now, big tech simps will say it's just a coincidence or that good old Zuck was trying to help my marriage. But look, I think we all know better. Zuck doesn't give a fuck when he's trying to turn a buck. So the big question here is whether China is a capitalist or socialist country. The mainstream answer is it really depends. But the real answer is that China's perspective is and has been socialist. The goal is to build a socialist society. Land, labor, technology, capital, and data are meant to it meant to be used to uplift the lives of every Chinese person. This means that this is a society where individuals live with each other with a collective responsibility. Look, there is no roadmap to build socialism. I mean, one can make the argument about capitalism. The difference is capitalism doesn't learn from its mistakes. It just figures out how to hide them 
for a little bit. Slavery is arguably one of the largest mistakes made by capitalism, and yet it uses slave labor to drive consumerism. At least with socialist governments, they're trying to figure out how to reduce repeating the same mistakes and come up with newer solutions. The expectation of capitalists is that after a socialist or communist revolution, there should be a utopia the day after. They use this absurd messaging mixed with flowery faux academic language to discredit the work being done to build a socialist society from rubble. The real reason for so much Western aggression over China is because it proves that socialism does in fact work even in a country as large as China. And China and America are inexplicably linked considering China is the world's manufacturer. It shows that after 1979, China was more in control of American capitalism than America was. Consider how many American flags and American flag underwears are made in China. Look, even Marx and Engel talk about marketization being good for creativity and innovation. That's what they did when they opened up to the rest of the world. They figured out a way to use capital to develop social programs and equitable distribution. Look, isolationism is inherently not socialist. You can't be a socialist if you're not, well, you know, social. So when it comes to critiques about China, it really depends what's convenient for capitalists. Anything that benefits China and grows their economy is obviously because America's capitalist influence is to help them out. But when they implement laws like restricting hours for video games or regulating billionaires, it's because they're authoritarian socialists. Oh, shit. There's that oxymoron migraine. Fuck. Look, China used socialism to eradicate poverty and is an example of what you can do when you put the lives of people in front of profit. And it can help other countries achieve the same thing. Capitalist giants like America tried to stop this progress since the beginning with economic sanction, militarism, and and spreading misinformation. That's like kicking someone when they're down. But the plan is failing because China is now on its way to construct a society that looks beyond capitalism. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video and podcast. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button uh, and please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, whether you are watching this on YouTube or Rockfin or Odyssey or Facebook or listening to the audio version, please make sure that you are subscribed to receive updates to know when I'm putting out new videos uh, because I put out videos uh, on, on a relatively regular basis. Uh, And uh, the easiest way to keep up with everything that I do is by joining my free email list. I send out one email every single Sunday uh, that gives you a list of all of the videos and podcasts I've released. And sometimes you get some bonus uh, short stories and real life stories as well. Uh, Not only that, you can also become a sustaining member making monthly contributions, which gets you a bunch of bonus stuff like uh, bonus stand up shows, bonus stand up comedy content uh, and uh, and and bonus videos that 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 you get uh, from me as well. So there's tons of bonus stuff that you get by becoming a sustaining member uh, and you can get tickets to be in the virtual audience of the next Forkful of Noodles recording, which happens on the last Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. All of this information, all of these links are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. I want to thank everybody that, that has subscribed, has liked, has shared all of my content, has become sustaining members. You guys are, are uh, uh, big reasons that, that, sh- that shows like this continue to, to be made and the quality of these shows continue to improve. So thank you very much uh, from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, but till the next one, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the road.